I think every once in a while, a Lego Star Wars set comes along that you never realized was just so overdue. And the Ultimate Collector Series Jabba's Sail Barge definitely is that type of set for me. Now, they've made a couple of great smaller sail barges in the past, but coming in at $500, I expect the UCS version to be better in every way. It includes 3,942 pieces, and if we look at the top of the box, you can actually see all 11 characters included in the set that we'll dive deeper on later in the video. The rest of the outside of the box is very well done. However, it's just standard UCS packaging at this point so there's nothing notable about it. Now for unboxing the sail bars, you have three tape seals. You cut through those very easily. It opens right up and it presents the sail barge on the side straight from the movie. And then on the inside, you've got Jabba the Hutt with Slave Leia in front of him. That's a beautiful shot there. And let's see, I think there's even more. Oh yeah, that's gotta be our other box in there. So there's Max Rebo. It's the exact same thing on the other side of the box. And then I always love that they do this numbering the box that makes building so much easier with some of these really big sets <laughs> oh that's awesome number two coming out here we go so this one is of course salacious b crumb and it is also numbered with the number two on the side of the box there i think we have to open box one first here flip that up and let's see what we got Saving the environment here. Some paper bags, but a lot more plastic. So the paper bags here clearly have Jabba the Hutt inside, and then this one has the actual sails for the sail barge. So they're separated nicely. Although you would think that they would put these inside of the instruction manual thing so that it doesn't get bent. I'd be a little bit worried about that. Mine turned out fine, but just something to keep an eye on if you buy one of these. It also looks like both instruction manuals are gonna come in the first box. By the way, the sticker sheet is also way smaller than I expected for a set of this size, but it's probably a good thing in most people's books. Speaking of books, inside our first instruction book, we have quite the write-up about Jabba's sail barge. I think they do a good job giving a lot of background on the sail barge. They also do a good job trying to upsell you on the $80 companion set to the $500 UCS Jabba's sail barge. We'll have to save that topic for later in the video though, because a couple pages on they actually talk about the minifigs in this set and I keyed in on the fact that they pointed out that a few of them were new and they didn't use the word exclusive unlike last year with the UCS Venator. I very much appreciate that the Lego marketing team or whoever writes these up decided not to try and deceive a bunch of paying customers this year. That's a thumbs up from me. Now the next page actually is probably my favorite page because they point out a lot of things in the sail barge and what they are or what they do and I just love that. I think it's really good to give fans basically a cross section of a set like this so that they actually know what they're building if they don't know. The final couple of pages here show off the movie model and how to actually pick up the Lego set so you don't break it. Like I said earlier, we've got 11 total figures in the set and I do think 11 is a pretty good number. However, there were definitely a lot more background characters that could have made their way into this one. So if you felt like there should have been more, I totally understand you. But as far as what we have, the first one we'll look at is Jabba the Hutt. It's still the same exact mold that we saw introduced back in 2012, except he's got some updated prints. The face print is also just shinier looking to me compared to the older one. The head can also still rotate 360 degrees on the body the arms can move up and down and he can hold things in his hand if you really want and then if you've never seen the bottom of a lego java before there is the ability to connect him to things so we'll be using that feature a little bit later the last thing i have to say about this guy is he does have pupils in his eyes there was a lot of fear that lego would remove the pupils from java here and luckily they didn't not everyone was this fortunate salacious Crumb here has been ruined in my opinion. The version from 2012 looks so much better than this ghostly salacious B crumb from 2024. And to add insult to injury, that picture inside the box makes it very clear that he should have black pupils inside of the yellow eyes. If it weren't for the terrible eye design, this would be a fantastic figure, but for some reason, Lego Star Wars just keeps inventing new ways to make minifigs worse. And it's sad because everything else about this figure is so good. The mold is great, every other bit of printing on it is great, and then it just ruins the look. It is what it is, $500, can't get two black dots. Another seemingly controversial figure in this set is C-3PO, and you're probably looking at it wondering how that figure looks amazing. Well, that's not the figure you get in the set. This is, I tricked you. See, they took away the dual molded leg from C-3PO for this set for some reason. Meanwhile, the $240 UCS Luke's Lane Speeder and $100 C-3PO sets both include a dual molded leg C-3PO. So it stands to reason that as the sets get more expensive, the quality at the very least should stay the same, if not get better, not get worse. Now, when pictures of the set came out, many people defended Lego under the impression that C-3PO actually didn't have a silver leg in Return of the Jedi, so this non-dual molded leg was still proper. However, the silver print shouldn't be there if he's not supposed to have a silver leg, but 
that's all pointless anyway, because I went back and watched the movie. There it is! It's beautiful! Take your hat off, boy, that's a dollar bill! Oh, it's so clearly silver. So inexcusably, in my opinion, LEGO Star Wars has cut corners here. It's actually insane to not include the proper dual molded leg when you already have it in other cheaper sets. And I suppose if in your heart of hearts you believe that C-3PO doesn't have a silver leg in Return of the Jedi, well then why didn't LEGO still give him that great side leg printing? It doesn't make sense no matter how you slice it. Unfortunately, we've got another pretty bad one here in Bib Fortuna. Sure, the torso and leg printing and detail is very nice, however, the head and headpiece are both just bad. We've got no pupils once again, so you're losing any real ability to recreate the frankly scary look that Bib Fortuna has. And then the piece on his head is actually the piece that they made for fat Bib Fortuna. This is not fat Bib Fortuna. This is Bib Fortuna from Return of the Jedi, therefore he should have the Return of the Jedi headpiece. You know which set did have the Return of the Jedi headpiece? A $7 play set from 2003. On a more positive note, the Gamorrean Guard, while not a new figure for this set, is still just amazing. I don't think this figure gets enough credit for how great the mold and printing is. It's just fantastic what they're able to do with this one in particular. Our next three minifigs from left to right are Kathaba, Wolf, and Vazam, and these definitely feel like the side characters in the set to me, like if they weren't here, you wouldn't even blink an eye, but having them included is nice, and I think they look great. They definitely look very menacing and evil. They've all got their own unique style, and I'm going to be honest, Wolf's helmet is just killer looking. They did a great job with the detail on that. Next up, the R2-D2 is the standard version with the back print, except he's carrying around some drinks for the sail barge, which is awesome. Next, we got to talk about a very surprising inclusion in Slave Leia. I thought LEGO Star Wars would never make this minifigure again. It definitely seemed like Disney had told toy manufacturers not to make any Slave Leia merch, but alas, Lego has broken the glass ceiling and we have a Slave Leia in front of us. Now we'll start up top where things are great. The hair piece is one of the best Lego Star Wars hair pieces that we have ever seen. They did such a great job with it. You've also got some nice facial expressions. Then the detail on the torso also looks really great. It's got the slight indentations that make the character look more female. They've also included the piece that you can put around her neck and chain her up to Jabba the Hutt with, which is pretty cool to give you the full recreation of that scene. But finally, we got to talk about her legs. They gave her dual molded legs, which I said with C-3PO would have been a really good thing. And I think dual molded legs here could have been a great thing if they were implemented properly. Now, let's discuss exactly what I mean by that. So on the original Slave Leia minifigs from the front, they all look great. But if you turn them around, you definitely feel like Leia's a little underdressed on the backside. So let's just say theoretically to rationalize bringing the character back, Lego had to dress her up a bit more. Fair enough, I get it. However, in doing so, you made the character look like it's wearing swim trunks, which whether I get it or not, it, that's how it looks and it doesn't look good. Now, there was a solution to this. You don't have to look much further than Lobster Love and Batman, who actually prints over the dual mold of the same dark red color to allow a little bit of skin to show through. I don't know why they couldn't do the same thing on the side of Leia's leg or something, just something where it breaks up the pattern that looks like she's wearing swim trunks. You know, it doesn't have to be as crazy as the backside of the old figures, I get it. But like, man, this is way too far of an overcorrection in my opinion, and it just makes the figure look bad to me. I wouldn't call it a figure to buy the set for. I think you could buy one of the older Slave Leia's and they're much better, or at least the legs and swap them out. Either way, like, the pants look is just not it. And perhaps having saved the best for last year, we have Max Rebo, who looks fantastic. It is basically a one-to-one -one copy of the Max Rebo from 2013, except I noticed a slight difference between my old one and my new one in that the old one has a lighter colored head that doesn't match as well to the body color. I don't know if my old one was like an error color or something, but either way, this new one looks perfect to me, so that's a really good thing. Surprisingly, to display all the minifigs we just saw, they actually include this black display stand. They've also got a display slab, for Jabba the Hutt up there. But why I say surprisingly is that this set in the sail barge is super reminiscent of the UCS at, -AT at its core. And the at, -AT didn't have a display stand for its figures. It just had you put the figures inside of the model. And I kind of feel the same way about this model. So this is a nice extra. I think some people will appreciate it. And I suppose for me, I'm just like, ah, didn't need this, but cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at the slab. We'll put the figures on there in a second, actually. But the slab, of course, they got to use the same green color he's got. So that you know to put him there. But yeah, you can put him on there. You can angle him a little bit because he's only attached with one stud. You can move him around and attach him on different parts of his body. His 
as we showed earlier, there's a lot of space down there. So you just kind of pick your spot, although some are gonna be prettier than others. To the right, we've got a nice 25 years of Lego Star Wars brick, but we have seen it in a lot of sets this year, all of which I've reviewed on my channel. And then we have the Jabba Sail Barge info card, which is printed on an eight by 16 tile. I think this is the fourth UCS set that they have printed these for, and it looks great here. There was a brief period in the last year that they actually switched from this nice matte finish to a reflective one that looked immediately worse out of the box and they swiftly switch back to the matte finish. Another thing I noticed comparing this to my Venator one, it actually has a white layer underneath all of the blueprints. So it does really pop more than the older display cards as well. Having placed all the minifigs on stands in front of the sail barge now, I gotta say, I do really see the vision. I think the stands are a great extra inclusion. And as a second option, I think a lot of people will really enjoy displaying their minifigs like this. Unfortunately, on the whole, I don't think the minifigs are that great in this set for $500. As I explained, there's just a lot left to be desired, especially when most of the problems I have with these figures are things that were done better in the past. And that's an unfortunately common theme with Lego Star Wars these days. But I think it's time we turn our attention to the real star of the show, the build for the UCS Java Sail Barge. Seeing as both the UCS Sail Barge's predecessors were play sets, I figured I'd give you a quick size and looks comparison. That being said, the UCS Sail Barge is effectively still a play set in the same way. It's got a lot of the same features and functions that the older play sets have. It's just much bigger and more expensive. I'll have a more in-depth comparison video on the channel at a later date, but it is pretty cool to see them next to each other. The biggest downside of the UCS one is it just doesn't fit in my shelf anymore. I should say if you have the same shelves and don't have doors though, it will fit. I think the only way to describe the exterior design on the UCS sail barge is perfection. This thing just looks so amazing and the only way you could not like the way this set looks is if you just don't like the UCS sail barge. It's not like the minifigs where there's like something glaringly wrong with any of it. This is just such an amazing model and the designer did such a great job. Even on the front end where if you look at the two previous models, there definitely were some different ideas for how it could be done. But I love the way they did the paneling and it ends up matching the rest of the body with the studs on the outside look. So I think it looks wonderful. I also love the super subtle brown bezel that you see on the underside of the sail barge. On the bottom of the sail barge, there's a fairly simple stand design with three points of contact to hold it up. And you can see me also holding the model properly. You definitely don't want to hold it at the ends like it says because you might snap the thing and drop it. Don't want to do that. On both sides of the build, you have the steering vane and the sticker design on it actually looks pretty good to me. And as a steering apparatus, it can move. So you can actually steer the sail barge with this. I mean, in universe, not really with your UCS head, but it can pop out further. You can bring it into the body of the ship, maybe to speed it up. I guess maybe that slows it down, move it up, down, all around. What they did here is definitely better than just having it in a static spot so that you can kind of decide how you want to display your sail barge. So I do really like and appreciate that. And yeah, it can do basically anything you want it to, but we'll put it back up to the body for now. I always wondered what the big platform at the back of the sail barges was, and it turns out that is the thrust exhaust. I'm sure there's a lot of nasty fumes coming out of there because Jabba is definitely not doing anything to keep the dunes clean, right? Now, of course, the entire side of the sail barge basically looks like it's got a bunch of closed up windows, but the shutters at the back actually can be open. Maybe you'd find it to be a bit more of an interesting feature if you saw some minifig faces peeking through, which we'll get to, but it's definitely a great feature that you're able to open these up if you want to. Personally, when I display my sail, barge though, I keep everything closed because I think it looks best. The last thing I want to say about the paneling on this set is how great a job the designer did on this back curve area. It's an area that could have theoretically gone so wrong, but they did such a great job minimizing the gaps as much as possible. And so it's honestly not even a problem. It's not something you notice. It just looks like a normal Lego curve and I love it. I think it looks so good. The exterior, just such a great job was done with it. And we're not even done yet. We haven't even uh, looked at the top side. Much to my surprise, the sails in this set are actually cloth and not plastic. The 2013 ones were plastic, so I just figured they would stick with that. But no, they went back to cloth. And as long as yours didn't bend in the package, they are gonna look beautiful. Another thing I immediately noticed on this UCS sail barge is that the deck is actually done in a gray color compared to the tan colors on the previous versions. But I think especially for the UCS version, the gray color looks really nice. It definitely matches the brown better at this scale. To make our lives a little bit easier as we explore the deck, I'm gonna remove the sails. So that's something you can do if you need to 
just access different parts of this a little bit easier. The majority of the top deck is tiled off, which I think looks really nice, but there's still the occasional stud or two to allow you to place a minifig on. I was actually kind of surprised I went this far, but there are hatches on top that can open, and then there's a ladder on the inside that allows a figure to come on up to the top. And then there's a much larger area here that has the staircase on the inside. So you'll see all of that later. The main cannon on deck looks simply amazing. It's got the ability to point down, point up, and spin 360 degrees with no obstructions. And then you can even place a figure on the side of it. So I think that's amazing. They did a great job with that one. There's also a couple of smaller clip-on blasters for the railings, and these also look pretty good. And you can have a minifig stand behind them with one of the studs. So I think that's awesome. One other kind of crazy thing on the deck is just how accurate the railings are. It doesn't just cut under the other one because they had too long of another piece. It like literally is supposed to look like that. Same with this one up here. It's pretty insane that they went that far, but with some minifigs on the deck, I think it brings a lot of life to the sail barge. You certainly could add more than I did here, but there's even more on the inside, so let's dig in. To open this panel, you literally just pull down on it and you're greeted with access to a couple different sections. Now the front panels on the sail barge don't open at all, but if you still don't find this to be enough access to any of the given sections. The top parts of the sail barge can actually pop off super easily. It's just like that. And now you also have a top-down access to the interior. The first section here is a cockpit. And honestly, I love the empty space around it because it makes it not feel cramped at all. It's very abnormal for a Lego Star Wars set to just have this much empty space, it feels, but I really like it. There's some nice stickered control panels and the one in the middle in Arabesh there actually says scanning. Off to the sides, there's also some printed control panel pieces. And then you've got the seats in the middle. You've got space for too many figs to be seated. And if you don't like the angle, you can actually raise the seat up to match them. Having placed another one in the foreground there, you can see you can lean back pretty easily as well. And I ought to add in here now that it is accessible from both sides, so there you go. Now behind all that, we've got a pretty awesome sliding door, and that's gonna give you access to the armory and prisoner hold. I love this addition to the interior of the sail barge. It's got a cell door that can be opened to access the seat. You can also kinda access it from the top, but honestly, it's a bit of a tight fit. So they actually thought about this and made the whole thing removable. Clipped onto the cell, we've got a broom and handcuffs, and if you look inside it's definitely tight quarters we can place a figure like maybe c3po on the inside and then there's something pretty cool on that sticker so you've got the tally marks keeping track of time and then i translated the arbesh below and it says han was here you can see it just uses a couple studs to connect at the back and placing it back in as a breeze and even though the rest of this back wall area is just unused space they thought of this really cool use for the wall to have it be a breakaway wall so your prisoner like c3po there can escape i think a feature like that adds so much more life to a set like this even though when i'm done with this review i'm closing it up and i'm probably never going to play with it again and this is an adult set so like play features are kind of a mute point it's still really cool now here's the front pair of ladders i was talking about that lead to the upper deck they are also unsurprisingly removable so you can get a little more floor space on the back wall here you've got a pretty awesome armory lots of weapons and things for jabba's thugs and you can place the gamorian guard on the stud in front if you'd like i think it's a uh, pretty fitting the only downside to having removed the ladders by the way is the floor ain't so pretty underneath there but the rest of the floor is that light gray tiling just looks so good on the inside of this sail barge our next interior section is the galley and you can see in the foreground they've got that stairway and ladder that lead to that larger hatch on the top of the deck. Just like the ones up front, this one is also removable, but it does leave some not so great looking things on the ground. The detail inside of the galley though is simply insane with a frog roaming free in front of it, meaning it should probably be shut down by the food inspector. But then again, maybe everything else on Java's sail barge ain't so clean either. Uh, you got this really cool hood and stove top with the flame. Just like, I noticed that immediately. That's probably the coolest part about this whole thing to me is this little section here. This feels straight out of like a Lego modular. You've got plates underneath the countertop, different little foods and bones, little trash can off to the side, which if we remove, there's actually an opening cupboard here. Let's see if I can get it. There's nothing inside. How boring. You also got to love the open concept allowing Bib Fortuna to directly serve the Gamorrean guard. And then on the back wall, there's another couple very cool stickers with one reading Womp Rat Stew and the other reading Bantha Roast. This is just such an insane and unexpectedly great part of a build for a UCS Jabba sail barge. Like you would never think there'd be such a great kitchen included, but there is. Yes. The final section here with some very large panels, of course, accommodates Jabba the Hutt. Now he can slip in the front. You can have him go in that way. You can also bring him in through the top of the sail barge and attach him onto the platform in there or get him out of the way. You can remove this entire platform and pull it out of the sail barge. So he has his own slab that you can then connect him to. And by the way, I wish they had done that piece in olive green too. 
that would have actually matched what they did on the display stand. He looks really great on there and they added a lot of detail to this little section. So I really like it. Plus there's plenty of space if you want to chain up Slave Leia. And then there's also a perfect little spot to place Salacious Crumb behind Jabba, which is amazing. There's a hidden chest back here and it actually contains a light gray chain. So I think I've actually been using the wrong chain for the whole video. I must have stolen this from one of my older sail barge sets. So I just figured that out. Interesting. Now, just like when we discussed the minifigs, I feel like I may have saved the best part of the interior for last. They were able to give Max Rebo his entire little section back here. And according to the instructions, that's his red ball jet organ. And so you can place him in there very easily. Looks amazing. And it, of course, like everything else in the set or almost everything else in the set is removable. So that's what the whole thing looks like out of the sail barge. And it allows you to display him out of the sail barge like that if you really wanted to, which I think is a great option to have. Now, I also got to point out the great part usage of these lampposts. They're really on point for what you see in the background of the sail barge. And then on the outside of that, there's a couple of studs on both sides of the sail barge that you can actually place a figure on to have them looking through the window. So of course, Slave Leia is maybe the go-to option for this to recreate part of the movie. Now, I think if you wanted to, you could could remove the panels and just like the UCS ATAT, -AT, display this like it was a cross section of itself. But as you can tell, these don't come off easily at all. So I don't know if that's the intention or not, but if you wanted to, you could. So at the end of the day, should you spend $500 on the UCS Jabba sail barge? Well, Lego really wants you to spend 580 because they want you to buy that desert skiff and Sarlacc pit and get all those other main characters that are integral to the scene in Return of the Jedi. And I love that they are two separate sets. I actually think that's a really cool thing, but I think it's problematic that they want all of this money for all of this stuff and you're not getting the return of the Jedi Boba Fett. You're not getting a very good looking Slave Leia. You're getting a non-dual molded leg C-3PO. You're getting fat Bib Fortuna when he wasn't fat in this movie. Like there are just major problems with a lot of the characters when there shouldn't be. These should all be perfect. For $580, the characters to me are the biggest holdup. Meanwhile, the builds of these things are the best versions of these that we've ever had. As controversial as this sounds, I just think if Lego's asking this much money for their products, which I don't have a problem with inherently, I love getting things like a giant UCS Jabba sail barge, you just have to have the right complementary stuff. It's gotta be done right from top to bottom, and it's just not. Value for money with Lego sets can just be so subjective. There's just so many different ways to define it and things people might be looking for when they're spending $500 on something, or in some cases, $580 on something. But ultimately, I personally can't say this is quite worth $500. I think they did such a great job with the sail barge that it basically saves the set. If this sail barge was made 10 years ago and wasn't as perfect as it is, this would be like a flop to me, but I think there's still some salvation in how great of a job the designer did on the sail barge. Just the minifigs have got to get better with Lego Star Wars. It's just atrocious that things are getting worse year over year while the sets are getting more expensive year over year. Rating a set like this is always tough, but I think if I had to slap a number on it, I'd give it an 8.4 out of 10. Just whatever you do, don't pay full price for this thing. Make sure you get a promo when you buy it or get some sort of discount. Like $500 is just too much money for a premium product when it doesn't feel premium on some levels so let me know what you guys think about the ucs sail barge in the comment section below if you enjoyed hit the like button and you can check out more 2024 set reviews on the end screen now